The new science fiction film Reminiscence has finally released in theatres and there's a lot of questions to answer. The film by Westworld co-creator Lisa Joy, who wrote and directed the project, has given us a neo-noir about memory. I'm going to be explaining the plot, the ending, and the mind-bending twists in the aim to help you guys gather a greater sense of what's happened. This analysis will contain spoilers, so if you do happen to be someone who hasn't seen the film yet, then I would recommend watching this video after you've seen it. But if you want to see more on reminiscence and upcoming films, then don't forget to support this video by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive into the plot and ending of Reminiscence Explained. So Reminiscence is a film that has snuck up on us without barely any marketing, but it does boast a few elements to get people intrigued. The film has a great cast starring Hugh Jackman, Van Dewey Newton, and Rebecca Ferguson, and debuted on HBO Max in the US and cinemas worldwide. But the film boasts not only a great cast, but a brilliant creative auteur in Westworld's co-creator Lisa Joy. Like Westworld, Reminiscence takes place in a vaguely near future world in which technological advancement and societal downfall go hand in hand, linked together by the basest human nature. Within this, we follow an army veteran turned private investigator of sorts in Hugh Jackman's Nick Bannister, who uses a special machine to trawl through people's memories. He does everything from allowing people to relive their happiest moments to helping them find their keys. But his life is changed when Rebecca Ferguson's May enters, and when she vanishes without a trace, he turns his talents to finding her, an obsession that develops as he struggles to learn the truth about who she really was. We begin this journey in Miami, Florida, which has suffered a natural disaster and is now mostly flooded. Wealthy people known as barons have brought up the dry land in the ensuing chaos and built dams to keep themselves free of floods, while the sunken coast and the rest of the city are left to fend for themselves. Unbearable heat has led to a mostly nocturnal population who make their livings in bars and shops navigated by boats along streets that are now rivers. Nick and Emily Watts Sanders, played by Van Dewey Newton, run a facility that allows people to relive their memories called reminiscences, which are displayed in a 3D computer hologram as the individual relives them, sedated in a water tank. The science is never really explained, and I think some more explanation into this would have really helped develop and flesh out the world building and logic within the story. But there are some cool aspects shown towards this in the film, such as the police using the machines, leading depositions into people's memories to help build cases. Also, these memories, once viewed, are stored on cards and held in padlocked vaults. The records Nick explains are for everyone's protection, so it's clear that there's no funny business on anyone's part. But as we learn in the film, one day a beautiful woman named May arrives to ask them to help find her keys, which they do, in turn leaving behind a pair of earrings. Using these, Nick tracks her down and they begin a love affair for the ages, but it soon becomes clear that this love we're watching grow is actually a memory Nick is reliving. In the present, May has vanished and Nick is haunted by her absence, so he begins to try and track her down, but Watts is worried about him and their struggling business. Even their regular customer Elsa, played by Angela Sarafayan, who is also a Westworld regular, hasn't come to relive her memory with her old man lover. 
Not to mention that Walter Sylvan, one of the barons, whom the district attorney has been trying unsuccessfully to prosecute, has died, but a judge has ruled that all his land will go to his son Sebastian and his wife Tamara. Nick of course doesn't care about any of this at the time because all he cares about is finding May. And through the memory hunting, he discovers that she used to be a drug addict living in New Orleans, leading to him going there to see if she had returned. Instead, he finds a drug dealer named St. Joe with a chip on his shoulder, and they have a near fatal fight, only for what's to come to his rescue. The two return to Miami, but Nick can't let it go, and Watts eventually reveals to him through her memory that the day before she vanished, May came to her and they had an honest conversation in which she revealed her past, and Watts likewise revealed she has an estranged daughter. But May takes advantage of the moment alone to slip into the vault and steal a memory card. The stolen card belonged to Elsa, and Nick realises that the man Elsa had been reliving in her memories was none other than the now deceased Walter. He and Watts argue, and he fires her, but of course this won't be for too long due to their close bond. Nick then heads to find Elsa, only to discover that she had been murdered and her son had been kidnapped by a red-headed woman, who he rightly assumes to be May. To figure out where May went, he finds Cyrus, a dirty cop turned henchman, who has popped up in various memories, and after another near fatal fight, he kidnaps Cyrus and examines his memories, which reveal the truth he's been looking for. In Cyrus's memory, May details her story in which she was indeed an addict that has been coerced by Cyrus into setting Nick up in order for them to steal Elsa's memory and find out where she and her son were by order of Walter. However, in the ending, it's revealed to Nick that May did truly fall in love with him. She completed the mission, but by then, Walter had died and Sebastian wanted his half-brother out of the way, so he ordered both of their deaths. May told Cyrus to Elsa and rescued her son so he wouldn't be killed. When Cyrus asks where she's taken the boy, she says, You know, I already told you. It's the one place I could think of to feel safe. And in this moment, we realise that she knows that Nick will eventually find this memory, and it's clear that she's actually talking to him. She took him to a remote house out on the water, where she had once been rescued by the owner, a solitary woman named Frances, which is a story she told to Nick in one moment of vulnerability. She then proceeds to overdose, knowing that the only way to keep the boy safe is to destroy access to her memory, and flings herself out of the window, dying. In reaction to this, and finding out the truth, Nick turns up the voltage on the machine to fry Cyrus's brain, searing this memory into his brain forever. He then heads to Sebastian, where an entire world has been set up to keep Tamara, who has had a memory of her own seared into her own brain, from losing her mind, replaying a time when she and Walter were happy. Nick does confront Sebastian though, telling him he knows that it was he who sent Cyrus to kill Elsa and the boy, but that it's too late now as he's already told the police where to find him. Following these events, Nick goes to the facility where Watts now works to tell her what's happened, and he reveals he cut a deal with the DA in order to get away with having purposely fried Cyrus's brain after finding out what happened. But even after escaping the situation, we learn in a short final scene that Nick has actually imprisoned himself for years and years, leading into the future. I guess to him, it's the only way he can feel happy regarding his obsession, and we learn that he essentially keeps reliving his own memories of May, which is narrated film noir style, the same narration that the audience themselves hear. It's many years in the future, and Watts is now a grandmother, checking in on old Nick, who is still in the tank, reliving his brief relationship with May forever until his death. 
Despite how confusing it might seem, it's actually a fairly straightforward ending to a story about love, money and revenge. And although I had a lot of issues with the pacing, the fleshing out of story points and lack of world building on display, I must say, this idea is one that I do applaud in a time where we don't get that much original films on this kind of budget. But that was my video explaining the plot of Lisa Joy's Reminiscence. Like I was alluding to, the idea of Reminiscence was actually a great one. It links into the themes of old noirs and modern sci-fi films, and I think the setup and potential was all there. However, I do think the execution could have been a lot better, with at times the script being light and there not being enough world building to support the story. This is something that Lisa Joy did so well on Westworld, especially her episode from season 2, and I can't lie when I say I was disappointed with elements like these in her first film. I think there's so much going on here, and it's a film that may have benefited from better dialogue and more time for greater fleshing out of multiple events and central ideas. Is Lisa Joy better suited to the medium of TV? Maybe. But again, I do think that the ideas she tackled had the potential to be really memorable. It might change for me on rewatches, and I definitely will give it another run through, but right now, I am slightly disappointed with this latest effort from the Westworld co creator. Hopefully, that will change with upcoming projects like the Fallout TV series and Westworld Season 4, which I'm still really excited for, but we will just have to see. I'm giving Reminiscence a 6.75 out of 10. I hope this did help some of you guys understand the film a bit better, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you thought of Lisa Joy's Reminiscence, so don't forget to let me know down below in the comment section. But for more content on films like Reminiscence, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.